Bagot Community was established in October 1938 to house people moved from the closed Carlin compound. It included 727 acres of land, much of which is now the suburb of Ludmilla. After being used by the Defence Forces during World War II, Bagot was re-established in 1946, and even though this land was originally intended for the use of the Aboriginal people, the Darwin Town Plan of the same year set out the subdivision of Ludd Miller. So what was it like, to, do you remember when um, the houses started being built around Bagot and it got made smaller? Do you remember that time? Well, we started from that end. Back there. Uh, no, I think we have to leave because they started putting in the drain, and the drain just came from the reservation to stop it. Awful drain. We only had um, two nights, I think, for going out in a big, big uh, old cattle truck where we'd go and watch um, pictures every Wednesday, um, country and western. And sometimes uh, uh, Jeter and some old, old Aboriginal pictures. And I just got a shock when, I, when we did finally have the right to go inside and see people. I got a shock to see all these different names. You know, they said, hey, they're countrymen from back then. <laughs> from Port Keys, um, uh, Old Man Wilson, you know that one that was in the film, and then you got like countrymen family names all around these places here. I didn't think they'd put my father's name on the street. Which one's that? <laughs> That's what I put the top here, where Donnie lives. Yeah. In 1955, work on the subdivision began. Further residential development started in the 1960s and took over most of the Bagot land. By 1965, only 57 of the original 727 acres of Bagot remained as Bagot community. And so you were here for Cyclone Tracy? Yes, we were. Yeah. Did you want to tell me how that was in this street for, and for your family? Um, because it was on Christmas Eve, I suppose a lot of, and because there's been lots of warnings before over the years, a lot of people, I suppose, just thought, oh yes, another warning. And because mm -hmm. Cyclone Selma, I think, was um, forecast, say, 10 days before, um, and it didn't sort of hit, um, I suppose people were a little bit laid back about it, mm. but around about 12 o'clock and it started, the wind started to pick up, um, I think people started to take it more seriously. Mm. The warnings told you to stay upstairs if you're in an elevated house. Yeah. Um, uh, so we stayed upstairs, was, we went to bed, but then once the rain started blowing through the louvers, yeah. Um, we thought it might be best to go into the bathroom because they tell you to go into the bathroom area. Um, and then, oh, oh, we had our cat with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then um, the roof blew off, but we stayed in the bathroom. And then when the eye came, um, people did a quick check in the street. Our neighbour was actually with emergency services and the only house that had a roof left on it was down the end of the street wow. and there were some Chinese people that lived there so the people that were in the street went down to that house because I suppose at that time half the people from the street were on holidays and the other half were here yeah. so we went down to the house at the end um, which was the only one with the roof wow. and we were all in the lounge room when the um, cyclone turned and came back yeah. unfortunately as soon as it came it blew the walls the roof off and the walls of this the lounge away yeah. um, some people got into the hall area in the bathroom um, but we were stuck out on in the lounge area 
um, with our friends from down the street and two of their children and we were under the table and had a mattress on top of the table. Unfortunately, uh, the mattress blew away. We were holding onto the table and we had to make a decision to um, all together try and get into the hall, let go of the table and get oh. into the hall. And we were worried about, say, the table hitting us or whatever. Uh, luckily, we let the table go and we made it into the hall and the bathroom area where there were a few people squashed in there. Wow. And we sat it out until the morning. It was unbelievable. You yeah. couldn't. Be, when we were in the open, you could see the telephone box that was down the end of the street um, blow over and sparks come out of that. Um, mm. And when we got up in the morning and looked at, um, it was as it was as if a bomb hit the place. Mm. And where we'd been sitting under the table, you looked up and the hot water service, the solar hot water, and the water tank was sort of hanging down over the area where we were. So we were, felt we were very lucky. Yeah. Yes, it was, <laughs> I suppose, pretty traumatic. Sure. And then uh, we found that there was a person who lived in the Mullock Drive. Um, he was still here because a lot of people with children left. Uh, somebody knew this fellow in the Mullock Drive and he had a roof on his house, so we went and moved in there. Although you didn't have power, um, some people he, this gentleman had a, a generator which would you, you would turn on now and then but otherwise we did most of our cooking we had a barbecue yeah. um, and there was people that uh, people in the Navy and uh, we met some electricians that had come up from Katuma and they were working in the street reconnecting the power and they were working from like daybreak until night time yeah. um, and You'd ask them if they wanted to come for a barbecue at night and yeah. things like that. Um, I suppose you were sort of trying to sort your things out, clean things up. Yeah. Um, there wasn't any running water, so you had to go up to the pipeline up at the highway, Stewart Highway, to have a, a wash. Um, you'd go with your clothes and just take some soap. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody's little wading pool had blown into our front yard and uh, I think about could have been a few days a week later a fellow came around with a cement truck full of water yeah. so he filled that up with water and went to different places if people wanted water wow. so we used that um, <laughs> you just may do with different things I can't even remember how we did things like what our clothes washing or anything Yes, I think people band together in hard times yeah. and yeah. look out for each other. So.